Well, I have many moments in my, in my childhood. Every moment of our lives is a chance to understand what matters. I had a childhood where I spent a tremendous amount of time in the outdoors. And these are moments that matter. I remember when I was a kid, probably eight or nine, and my dad took me on my first deer hunt. We lived up around five different lakes, so I spent every day during the summer down on the lake fishing. There are moments we'll always remember. And I remember sitting there and this bobcat came out in the Sendera, and it was just magical, and I've been hooked ever since. There are memories in the making. Being able to hunt my first birds, Stories we'll share with friends and pass down to our children of family fun, outdoor adventure, and amazing places with abundant wildlife. I have so many of those moments. It's really what helped shape me as a person. Those moments are made possible by moments like these. Every day, all across North America, state wildlife agencies are leading heroic efforts to restore endangered species, repair critical habitat, and maintain our nation's natural abundance of fish and wildlife for generations to come. The states really are the cornerstone for fish and wildlife conservation across our country, it really always have been. Um, they're the laboratories of innovation. States are the champions of America's fish and wildlife. We're the voice, we're the ambassador, the caretakers and stewards of this extraordinary assemblage of fish and wildlife and outdoor recreation that we've inherited and that we want to pass on to future generations. The leaders of those state agencies and their federal and private partners in conservation must realize they stand on the shoulders of giants. Giants of conservation and American democracy who made the most of their moments on Earth. Those fathers of this great nation who designed a government that gets its power from the people and those founders of a system of conservation that we call the North American model. The North American model grew out of the concept of democracy. People own the wildlife, and therefore it is their responsibility to, to, to manage the wildlife scientifically, not politically. It's a system that recognizes wildlife as a natural resource belonging not to the government or the crown, but to the people who are its rightful owners. As we built the country and we defined the, the authorities between the federal government and the states, under public trust doctrine, the, the wildlife became under the state authority. Public trust doctrine gives states the privilege and the responsibility to hold wildlife in trust for the people. It is fundamental to the democratic federalist principles that the states manage the wildlife for the people. That is a, a product and a function of this great democracy that was established here, right here, 200 years ago. Of course, most people have never heard of the North American model or how it evolved over the last century. They're not aware of the Pittman-Robertson Act or other mechanisms of sportsman-funded conservation. Few Americans would recognize the names of conservation trailblazers Gifford Pinchot and George Bird Grinnell. And those who do speak of Theodore Roosevelt and Aldo Leopold likely know only the trimmings of their contributions to the most successful conservation system the world has ever known. Look at all of them out there, it's amazing. But people do appreciate wildlife. And as heirs to North America's wildlife legacy, they're fortunate to have conservation leaders who understand their critical role in the world today. These jobs are an extraordinary privilege. There's no doubt about that. That's absolutely undeniable. But these jobs are not about being a director. They're really about being a steward. They're about being a champion and enabler for this extraordinary group of professionals that are biologists and technicians and game wardens and communication specialists and outdoor recreation professionals um, and helping to inspire them to do more for our home ground. Well, you know, it cuts both ways.
because of the, the brilliant work they do, the incredible entrepreneurship that they employ, the opportunities they seek, the risks they take. It's just amazing when you have people like that that are working for you, uh, but really doing the work that you dreamed about your whole life. If you can't be inspired by that, uh, you know, you really need to wake up and ask yourself, what's life all about? I'm also proud of a system that has restored wildlife across our nation through the 20th century at a level that nobody ever dreamed possible. For more than 100 years, state wildlife agencies have had a huge role in transforming this continent from one that exploited and exhausted its precious natural resources to one that's blessed with a wealth of wildlife thanks to sustainable science-based management and conservation. And I don't think anybody does it better than Arizona Game and Fish. We've got the most successful Blackfoot and Ferret restoration effort of all the efforts in the country here in Arizona. When you try to describe the achievements of Arizona Game and Fish, it becomes an almost impossible task because there are so many diverse accomplishments. Those successes are made possible by our North American model of wildlife conservation. It's built around laws like the Pittman-Robertson Act, which generates billions of dollars a year for conservation from an excise tax on the sale of guns and ammo. Yet today, conservation is at a crossroads. Huge, huge challenges, absolutely. As our society becomes more urban and we're more uh, split from uh, our connection with nature, there's, there's enormous challenges from that. Population growth creates enormous challenges. The demands that are placed on our natural resources are greater than they've ever been. No doubt, there's a litany of challenges, and they're big. Um, you know, as I reflect on 20 or 25 years in this profession, the challenges that we confront, they're, they're bigger, they're more complex, and really at scales that are absolutely unprecedented in what we've seen in the past. And so that, that creates enormous challenges for us. It also creates enormous opportunities. Opportunities to draw on the source of past success so that one-time challenges become a brighter future. When I look back on the history of wildlife conservation, there are special moments in time that are unique, that are turning points that 50 or 100 years from now, people will write about. Today, right now, this is one of those moments. He's ready to go in his burrow. Once again, North America is looking for leaders to define a path forward. It starts by doing good conservation work on the ground every day, 24-7, and we do. We've done a, a marvelous job through the 20th century. The job is going to be bigger in the 21st century. There are a lot more species at hand that need to be addressed, but the states are still going to be the players that have the, the resources on the ground to be that incubator to bring forth the conservation of the future. We have to think about what's going to need in a hundred years. And that's what's probably the biggest challenge and could be the biggest missed opportunity, that we get so focused on the problems of today that we don't change and anticipate the needs of a hundred years from now. When times get tough, this is what we've got to remember. This is what we've got to keep in mind. Our future generations, we do it for them. The kids, Sammy and Marilyn Joe, these grandkids and all all of the kids in our country just like this. Right, kids? Yeah. If our nation's wildlife legacy is to prevail through the 21st century, our conservation leaders will have to seize the moment. Every moment does matter. Um, but I think it's less about thinking about those moments as a defining moment uh, than thinking about the fact that the work we do is measured in generational scales. Uh, we are planting the proverbial tree to have shade for somebody that's not even born yet. The defining moments in conservation are usually identified after the fact. We always need to be looking forward.